Saxon 7-6. This is lesson two, and it's a review of multiplying and dividing whole numbers and money. So let's get into it. We're going to first talk about multiplication, and there's a couple of vocab words that you need to know, and the first of those is factors. In the last lesson, lesson one, we learned that add-ins are the two numbers that you add together. Well, factors are like the add-ins for multiplication. They're the two numbers you're multiplying. Okay, and again, I still can't get my pencil to work, my, I, my Apple pencil, but that's all right. You're just going to have to deal with my finger. The product, remember we said we were going to have four names for answers, and the product is just the answer in a multiplication problem. And if you'll recall, the answer for um, an addition problem is a sum, and the answer for a subtraction problem is the difference. So now we have product, and that's the answer in a multiplication problem. So when we're multiplying two-digit numbers, okay, we are actually multiplying uh, two, there's actually two multiplication problems going on here. So if I have uh, three times two, right, we know that that is the same as saying three plus three, all right? and three times three is the same as saying three plus three plus three. It's three three times, right? Or three two times. Well, this is 28 14 times. And essentially this is multiplying, you're multiplying 28 uh, by two different numbers. So instead of saying um, 28 14 times, you know, so you could say 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 28, keep going. Um, you have 28 times 10 plus 28 times 4. That's what we're doing here in these multiplication problems. That's essentially what we're doing. And then you would get, you know, 28 times 14 if you added these two together. So that's essentially what we're doing here. Um, 28 times 4 is 112. Okay, and again, you want to make sure that you are lining, um, lining things up. Okay, uh, that's kind of ugly, but anyway, you want to line things up. 28 times 10 is just 280. So when we add those together, our answer 28, 14 times is 392. And the next part of this lesson talks about multiplying money. So multiplying a money uh, amount by a whole number. Um, and essentially what we're doing is so this is one dollar thirty five cents which is the same as a hundred thirty five cents times six it's the same thing so if we did this a hundred thirty five times six we would get eight hundred ten well, that's eight hundred ten cents or eight dollars and ten cents so they're just trying to make sure that you put that decimal point in the right place. Okay, if there's any questions about that, just make sure and let me know. All right, now we're going to move on to division. And we have three different vocabulary terms for division. We have the dividend, which I'm going to call the DV. Okay, the dividend is the number that's being divided. The divisor is the number doing the dividing. It's the dividing the dividend. And here's our last term for answer. This is the answer. Okay. So if we are um, using this, so there's a lot of different ways you'll see division problems. And again, this should be review, but if it's not, 
in this kind of a problem, you'd see the dividend underneath this little um, symbol here. You'd see the divisor on the outside. So this is the number that's doing the dividing. This is the number. This is the number that's being divided up. This is the number that's doing the dividing. And this, of course, is your answer. All right. Um, the other way that we would see this is this is the number being divided. This is the number doing the dividing. Okay, so you might see it look like a fraction like this. In fact, a fraction is really just a division problem. And then finally, you might see it like this. So the dividend divided by the divisor equals the quotient. Okay, so those are just some vocab terms that you're going to need to know. Now, let's talk about long division and the DMS loop. Um, the DMS loop stands for divide. M is all obviously multiply and S is subtract. So what am I talking about when I'm doing the DMS loop? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm uh, I'm going to look at 34 because I know 7 does not go into 3, but it does go into 34. And it goes into 34 four times. That's my D. Okay? Then I'm going to multiply. 7 times 4 is not 34, of course. It's 28. Again, you want to make sure you try and line these numbers up as best you can. Don't be sloppy, okay? And then finally we have subtract. So when I subtract that, I get a six. Now I'm going to bring this down. We have 65. Again, I'm going to divide. How many times does seven go into 65? Nine times. Nine times seven is 63. Okay, now I'm going to subtract. 65 minus 63 is 2. Bring the 6 down. 26. Divide again. 7 goes into 26. 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. That's my M. And then I subtract them and I get 5. I'm at the end of the line here with my dividend. I'm done. Uh, so I end up with a remainder of 5. In order to check these kinds of problems, you want to multiply. So in this problem, you would multiply 493 times 7. Okay, so you multiply that out, and then you add 5. And you should come up with 3,456. Okay. So this should be 3,451. Again, make sure you line your numbers up better than I'm lining them up here because you're not doing this with your finger. And now we come to the practice problems, which, as I told you in the last lesson, I will go through these practice problems uh, for you. Okay, actually, never mind. I forgot that I had fact families. It was on page 8. Uh, so fact families are three just like fact families with um, addition and subtraction, fact families are three numbers that can be combined to make four different problems. And in this case, we're talking about two multiplication problems and two division problems. So one example would be 2, 10, and 20. 2 times 10 is 20. And I can swap those. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 divided by 10 is 2, and I can swap those. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Another example would be 2, 3, and 6, and I'm sure you can come up with your own examples. Okay, now we'll get to the practice problems. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply 20 times 7. So we get 0, 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 2 is 14. And then we take 20 times 30, essentially. So we're going to put a 0 there. 
3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 2 is 6, so then I add those, and I get 740 cents, or $7.40. Okay, next problem, 37 times 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is always 0. Oh, coming back to this, by the way, the divisor can never be 0. Okay, the dividend can be 0. This can be 0. So if the dividend is equal to 0, then the quotient is going to be equal to 0. Okay, but the divisor cannot be 0. That's just impossible. You can't put zero, you can't divide something by zero. All right, C, 407 times 37. So first we're gonna do 407 times seven. And we get seven times seven is 49. So I put this up here, seven times zero is zero, plus four is four. And seven times four is 28. All right, then we have three times seven. And again, I'm moving it over here because it's actually 407 times 30. Three times seven is 21. Three times zero is zero, plus two is two. Three times four is 12. I'm gonna add those together. Again, make sure everything is all nice and lined up. So you should get 15,059. That's not a decimal point, that's a comma. All right, now for this one, it was kind of hard to make that. $8.40 divided by five. I'm gonna use my DMS loop. Five goes into eight once. One times five is five. Eight minus five is three. Then I get 34 goes in there six times, and then I get, bring that down, I get 40, bring that down, five goes into 40 eight times. Bring the decimal point up, I get $1.68 is my answer, okay? Again, if you're having problems with these, um, please let me know. 200 divided by 12, I'm gonna look at 20, 12 goes in 20 one time. Um, and then that I have 12, and that's 80. And 12 goes into 80 six times. And six times 12 is 72. I'm kind of, and then I have an eight. So that is a remainder of eight. 16, remainder eight. F, 234 is divided by three. So three is our divisor, 234 is our dividend. So I'm gonna go to the 23 because I know three can't go into two. And that is a seven. Seven times three is 21. And we have 24. 24 divided by three is eight. And eight times four is I mean, eight times three is 24, so we have no remainder there. Okay, then G says, which numbers are the divisors in problems D, E, and F? Well, the divisor in D, okay, we look up here at D, the divisor is five. That's the number that's going into, okay? In E, the divisor is 12, and in F, the divisor is three. All right, and then H says, use the numbers eight, nine, and 72 to make two multiplication facts and two division facts. Again, fact family, fun, easy. You take the two smaller numbers and they're gonna be multiplied together to make the bigger number. You're gonna write these out, of course. And then you have 72 divided by nine. It's gonna equal eight. And then you can just swap those out. And that gives you four different problems. I hope this was helpful. This is a little bit longer than the last lesson, but there was a little bit more to go over. Have a good day and God bless.